Please note that I am using two C-clamps to tie the frame to a card table or any sturdy surface which is out of the way and it provides plenty of light. We will begin by tying two strings across the loom. Make sure the strings are pretty good size. The reason will become obvious shortly. The type of materials you will use for the warp will depend on what you're trying to do. If you're planning to make a 100% wool rug, the warps will be made out of wool. Wool is not as strong as cotton. Make sure you buy wool which is twisted enough to be used as a warp. Typically using cotton will be much easier to start with and that is what I would recommend. How thick the strings need to be will depend on how close of a weave you're planning and also how thick the wool material will be for the clean part. You can find more detail on the materials video. We will now begin to add the warps to the loom. We will begin the process of adding the warps by looping it around the bottom rod several times and tie two to three secure knots. Before we begin to add the warps, I'd like to explain a fundamental principle in weaving, which is to alternate. This will become more clear when we begin to weave. To make it easy on you, I'm going to suggest a pattern to follow. Here goes. The pattern is over and under. We will begin to go over the bottom string, then under the top string, then over the top rod, then under the top rod, then over the top string. You can stop the video to examine the drawing. Then under the bottom string, then over the bottom rod, and under the bottom rod. At this point, the process begins all over again. What I want you to understand is that if at any time where you catch yourself forgetting where you are, you can repeat the mantra in your head over and under. Depending on your last move, you will either go over or under as you get back into the pattern. We will need two other items. This is just a strong plastic bottle, which I've added some coins and water to give it some weight. The advantage of using the weight is that your strings will have very even tension when you're done. As you get more experienced, you will understand how important even tension on the warps is. We will also need a couple of hemostats. You can buy them on the internet very easily and they're cheap. You can use zip ties or a string to tie one of the hemostats to the bottle. We will begin to go over the bottom string and follow the pattern I just mentioned. Once we've added the warp string, we will use the weight to add tension by attaching it to the loose end of the warp, which we just brought down. Next, use another hemostat to keep the two warps locked tight. Here's a closer look from another video, which you can also find on the website. Once the two warps are securely held together, you can then take off the weight and start adding the next set of warps following the over and under pattern. We will use the weight again to add tension to the material. Next, use the hemostat to keep the latest two warps you just added locked tight. And we'll repeat the process. Each time you move the hemostat to the latest two warps and so on.
I'm using a ruler to make sure the top and bottom strings are at the same distance from the edge of the frame. Once you've added two or three sets of warps, make sure again that the distance between the first warp on the right edge is the same distance from the frame both on top and bottom. This will make sure our warps are oriented properly. The next decision is to decide how tightly you want your warps to be on the loom. I will have eight sets of warps per inch. To keep my sanity, I will mark my warps on the count of eight. Believe me, it will save you a lot of headache later. Each set of warps includes two strings. I could have done 10 per inch, which would be a finer weave on the clean. How many warps you should have per inch will depend on the size of your warp strings and how tightly of a weave you plan to have. And of course your design. Your design will determine how many warp strings you will need. We need to add two pairs of warp strings extra on each side to build the salvage. If your pattern requires 45 warps, then add four more pairs for the salvage. That is two pairs on each side. So you will need 49 pairs of warp strings. Again, remember each set of warps includes two strings. So if your design requires 45 warps, multiply that by two and it gives you 90 warp strings. When you add two more pairs for the salvage on each side, it will give you 98 string. Once you've added all the warps, wrap the end of the string several times over the bottom rod and tie two or three knots so it is secure. Here's a close-up of the warps. Remember, before you move on from here, spend a couple of minutes inspecting your work to make sure everything looks right. For example, if your first warp string starts on top of the string, then the last warp should be under the string, as you can see. Once you're sure everything looks good, you can use a ruler to replace the top string. Remember that if you've done it right, the top string will be free to move. Create a gap of what is called a shed by tilting the ruler and add the shed stick. One last inspection by pulling down the shed stick until it reaches the crossing point. Look closely. Each successive string should be over and under all the way across. Now you can get rid of the top string, or if you like, you can just move it up the loom. We've now added all the warps to the loom and we're ready for the next step, which is adding the heddle stick. Thank you for watching this video.